The key signature tells GarageBand the root note and what chords to use in your song, but there's a whole lot more you can do with the key signature. So in this GarageBand Quick Jam, we're going to take a look. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And in this Quick Jam series, I do that as quickly as possible. So why am I still talking? Let's jump into GarageBand now. And here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone. This is the 12 bar blues track that I recorded and did a video on just recently. You can check that out in the link above and below. But at the moment, it sounds a bit like this. And you can see here that we've used two virtual instruments. We've got our upright bass and our flute, and we have our drum kit here. Now, the key signature that we set, to set a key signature, we tap in the top right corner on the little spanner icon, and then we scroll down, and there is key signature. If we tap on that, you can see that I've set the key signature of B flat major. And I also have the follow song key on, which we'll talk about in a moment. Now, the most simple thing that we can do at this point is we can actually change the key signature here. Now, because I've got the follow follow song key option on, whenever I change my key signature, it will actually change that. So let's change this say down to a D major now and hit play and take a listen. So you can hear there that it has reduced that down. It has actually transposed all those instruments down into D major. Let's tap again and bring up our key signature again here. You can see if you look at the notes over on the left, every time we shift this, by one semitone, it actually shifts our entire performance. So any virtual instruments that you have will actually change. As long as you have this follow song key on, if we turn that off, then we can change the key signature and none of those notes will in fact change. Now that's important because if you have other recordings that you have done on the audio recorder, they won't follow this key signature. So it will not transpose your vocals or a recorded guitar. Anything that's not a virtual instrument will not transpose with the key signature. So sometimes if you want to change something on an audio recorder track, you may want to leave the follow song key off. But if you have all virtual instruments like this, track and you do want to change the key signature, follow song key on and moving that around will actually adjust your key signature. A quick word of warning, however, if we change our key signature here, the undo option does not actually recognize that. So there's no way to undo our change of key signature. So what I recommend is that you make sure that you have a duplicate copy like I have here. And before you start playing around with key signatures and transposing your uh, different tracks, that you actually use a second duplicate copy so that you can always revert back to that original track. So what else does setting a key signature actually do that's going to help us here? Well, one of the best things is it'll actually change the chords to be the key chords for that key signature. So if we go to this electric piano, for instance, here, and we go into the chord mode, you can see here that because we have transposed this to E major, we have our E major chords here, E, A, and B, and also the relative minors, C sharp, F sharp, and G sharp. If we transpose this back to B flat major, then we go back to our B flat. So we've got our B flat, our E flat, and our F. So that's just a handy way to make sure that the chords you have here on your virtual instruments are gonna be right. So that's why setting that key signature at the start of your song is always a really good idea. One more quick tip before we finish up, and this is probably my favorite use of key signatures here in GarageBand, and that is that we can transpose to make playing our parts easier. So if you're an intermediate keyboard player like me, then playing in B flat major, means that you have to play E flat and B flat and there's a lot of black notes, yeah? So I prefer less black notes. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna transpose this by tapping on the settings here and take this down to C major, a key signature that I'm much more comfortable in because now I can play my electric piano part in C major. So let's record this and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so there is our part recorded in C major. So if you play it back. Apart from a couple of small timing issues, it's sounding okay. So now all we need to do is go back to our transpose and transpose it back to B flat major. And now... 
Ah, but Pete, it has transposed it up an octave. I know. So what we can do is we can tap on this and then we just need to go to settings and we've got our transposition here. Tap down one octave, hit done. And now... We have our part played in B flat major without having to hit a whole bunch of black notes. So I think that is pretty cool. And there you go, a very simple option, but you can see that it's quite powerful when you want to start transposing and adjusting your songs here in GarageBand. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave those down below, and I'll see you on the next video. Hey, thanks for sticking around. You know that we've got a heap of GarageBand Quick Jam videos here on the channel, more than 50 at the time of recording this one. You can check those out in the links down below. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking on the Studio Live Today icon or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for even more audio goodness.